All right, so we're, we're looking at 4.1, uh, pre-calculus 20, and this is number seven. So we're talking in 4.1 uh, about graphical solutions to quadratic equations. So in a question like this, two consecutive even integers have a product of 168. So this is the basic information about this question. And we need to know, understand a few things. Uh, well, first of all, consecutive means one right after the other, okay, not skipping anything. Even integers, even means 2, 4, 6, 8. Integers would include the negatives. So negative 8, negative 6, negative 4, negative 2. Okay, uh, even, even 0, I guess that would be probably part of that list. Um, but probably not in this case, because we're talking about a product. So 0 wouldn't be included in a product if it was something other than 0. So we're talking about even integers, uh, and we're also talking a product of 168. Okay. So in these type questions, what you want to do is you want to set up, like we said, a, a, an equation. And e letter A here guides us in that way. So what single variable quadratic equation in this form can be used to represent the product? So the product, okay, how do we represent the product? It's going to be a multiplication, right, of two things. And what are the two things? Two consecutive even integers. So we're going to let the first, let's let x equal the first even integer, okay? So the first even integer here. And the next, the next even integer, so if this is the first one, the second one, the second even integer is going to be what? How could we express that? Um, well, if we let it equal y, we are, we're, we're introducing a second variable. So how do I write the second integer in terms of x? So relating it to x. Thank you very much. x plus 2 is exactly right. So this is the first even integer. The next even integer would not be x plus 1, because that would be the odd number next to it, but it's x plus 2, right on. So you think about any, an example, number 10, right? That's an even integer. The next even integer would be 12, so we go 10 plus 2, and that works in every case. So the product would simply be x, that's the one integer, times x plus 2, that's the second integer, okay? Now we have some other information too that we need to include, and that's the product actually equals 168. So instead of p uh, for this expression, we're going to put 168 is what this equals. Okay. So we don't want to leave it there because we want to get it into standard form here. So I want to expand, I want to actually multiply out, gather like terms, and bring all of the terms over to the same side. And I don't know if you notice here, but it's always nice when A is positive. And we can, we can write it in such a way that A is always positive. So let me show you what I mean. So x times x is x squared. I'm going to leave that 168 over there for now. And x times positive 2 is plus 2x. Are you guys with me so far? Now, if this x squared term were negative, I could actually bring this over to the other side to change the sign. But because it's positive, I'm going to leave it there. And I'm going to bring the 168 to the other side. And how I do that is I do the opposite operation. See that? So this 168 has been taken away on this side. And what I'm left with now is a 0. So, I mean, if you really insist on putting the zero on the right side, you can. Um, you don't have to change any signs or anything, but you don't have to either. So this is perfectly acceptable. Uh, but you could do this if you really want to. That works too. And you don't have to change any signs because you're moving everything to the opposite side so everything can stay the same. Now, um, that, that seems to satisfy A. Are we good with that? Okay, very good. Now, B says, determine the two numbers by graphing the corresponding quadratic equation. So if we're graphing the corresponding quadratic equation, I'm going to want to either uh, uh, make a, a graph on graphing technology. I'm going to use a table of values. I'm going to maybe use intercepts to plot some important points or whatever you think you can do. Let's find the vertex, uh, right? Uh, whatever you want to do. Now, we could graph this on graphing technology. But let's say you were asked on a test to graph this using a table of values or using intercepts or anything other than graphing technology. You should know how to do that. So because the graphing technology would be the easiest, let's 
run through what B would look like if we didn't uh, or, or weren't able to use the technology. So what you might do is you might say, I remember from last chapter, negative B over 2A is the X value for what? Do you remember what that is? Yeah, the X value for the vertex, very good. And that would be pretty important for us to have because we would have then the axis of symmetry. So that's pretty, that's pretty good. So why don't we do that? So the X value of the vertex would be negative two over two times one. So the X value is negative two over two, which is negative one when it's simplified. So X equals negative one. And I could, I could then substitute X equals negative one into the equation. And again, we are, we're now graphing the corresponding function, right? So really this is what we're doing now. We're graphing this, that's what B says graphing the corresponding function right here. So if x equals negative 1, uh, I'm going to go negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 168. And this is going to be 1 minus 2 minus 168. 1 minus 2 is negative 1 minus 168 is negative 169. Okay. Whoops, where did that go? 169. So we have uh, y equals here. So our vertex is negative 1, uh, negative 169. Wow, that's, that's way down there, isn't it? So negative 1, negative 169 would be like way down here, if we we're going to sketch that. Now, determine the two numbers. Remember, the uh, x-intercepts are what we're really interested in, the, x, the x-intercepts. So what do I know about this graph other than now the vertex down here? Well, I know that at negative 168, because it's the constant, that's my... Um, that's my uh, y-intercept. So it's not going to help us too much there, but we can put uh, we can put another dot here, and uh, we're going to be looking at uh, let's let's try some x values on a table of values to see if what we can do to get uh, zero. Now again, this is by graphing. So the next section is going to be solving this using algebraic methods, which actually is going to be a little bit easier if you don't have graphing technology. So I'm trying not to factor this and go that way. I'm trying to show you what you would do if you wanted to try and graph it. So um, if you tried a table of values here and you plugged in some x values just to test out. So let's just do that. Let's say, well, what would happen if I'm going to try a table of values and I'm going to plug in, you know, maybe like uh, 2 or 4 or 6 or something like that. Two, uh, you know, let's go six, let's go eight. Let's just see what, see what those do. So I'm going to just calculate those quickly. So two is negative 160. It's still way down here. So we're looking for x intercepts. We're going to have to move over uh, possibly quite a bit here. So maybe even some of these numbers might not even be close. So you just kind of want to test. And yeah, this is a bit of a long way of doing this. But think about this again. Think about this again. So two numbers, consecutive even integers, have a product of 168. That's a big product. So those integers are probably going to be bigger than 2 and 3, right? Well, 2 times 4 is 8, so that's nowhere near a product of 168. We're going we're gonna to talk about something like tw in the 20s maybe, right? So with your table of values, why don't you just test out some things? Let's do, um, let's do 26. Let's try that. Um, that, might be, uh, that might be too much, but let's just see. So this yields 560. That's way out to lunch here. So we're looking for something between here and way up here. So 26 is way too high. And you might want to start testing some numbers in between. Let me give you a hint. Let me give you a hint. Because two numbers are consecutive, that means they're really close to each other. If you want an idea of what to test, you can take the square root of 168, and that should give you a, uh, a ballpark area of what numbers you should test, okay? That's just a hint. If you've got two numbers that are really close to each other that multiply to something, well, take that something and take the square root. That will be the, the, uh, the number, the exact number that's multiplied by itself, right? So you know those numbers are going to be pretty close to that square root. So that's just a little, uh, maybe a little logical hint. So let's see. Um, what times itself gives us 168? Okay, let's take the square root of 168. And you, 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 might, you might know this. Uh, it's going to be 12.9, almost 13. Ah, almost 13. So you know what? This might be a really good spot to start. Let's try x equals 12 and see what happens. Okay. So I'm going to erase some of this. We know this is out to lunch here. 
let's try let's try 12. What happens if we put 12 in there? Well, it's going to be 12 squared plus 2 times 12 minus 1, 6, 8. What's that? Oh, that gives us 0. Really? That gives us 0. That's exciting. Why is that exciting? Because that's an x-intercept, right? That's an x-intercept. So that's one of our possible solutions to this. Remember, the x-intercepts represents the possible solutions. Okay, so we're going to speed things up a little bit. We did find 12. That, that seems to work. So two numbers, two consecutive even integers. Now, there could be two sets. There, there, there is another intercept over here, right? There's another intercept. And because a parabola is symmetrical, remember, one of the reasons why we found the vertex is because that's the very middle, the symmetrical part of the, uh, the parabola. So this is actually 13 units away from the axis of symmetry. Do you see that? Because this is a negative 1 right here. This is negative 1. So that's 13 units away, this, this one solution. So the other solution will also be 13 units away from negative 1. So using logic, that's going to be negative 14. Okay, So negative 14 also gives us 0. Now, you may not be thinking this way. You may be thinking, Mr. Maxwell, this take the square root to find a possible number, uh, and, and what's this axis of symmetry, 13th? Th what, what is all this about? You may not think about this right now. This may not be part of your thinking, but I'm just trying to give you some examples of how you can uh, examine certain aspects of the function and then sort of, uh, you know, get your answers a different way uh, instead of just trial and error, you know, 10 or 12, 15 numbers. So negative 14, what does that mean? Well, that means that 12 and negative 14 are possible solutions for x. So if x was 12, that means x plus 2 would be 14. If x was negative 14, that means that x plus 2 would be negative 12. So notice the question is asking for two consecutive even integers. It doesn't say they have to be positive. It doesn't say they can't be negative. So what we found here by using these intercepts are these first numbers, and we also found pairs for them. So 12 times 14 equals 168. And also, negative 12 times negative 14 equals 168. So those are our two pairs of numbers, and you would finish that off with a, a sentence or somehow clearly stating that 12 and 14 and negative 14 and 12 are the pairs of numbers, uh, pairs of even integers. So some, uh, some just quick sentence like that explaining that you've used the algebra to answer the question. Okay. Any questions? All right, let's just see what would happen if we use graphing technology then. So the equation that we came up with, where is it? Oh, yeah. x squared uh, plus 2x minus 168. Okay. And if we were to graph that, I can probably tell right away that, oh, I don't see the graph. My window is totally out to lunch. If you don't know which way to go, just zoom out. That will work if, if you don't have the graph at all in your view. There we go. Ah, okay. So now you can check these intercepts, okay? So you can change your, uh, your y-axis if you don't like how steep that, that curve is. Uh, I'm going to change the y-axis to, uh, you know, just negative 5 maybe and positive 5. And that's going to, uh, whoops. The x, I'm sorry, we want the, uh, that made it steeper, didn't it? Hmm. Okay, so let's make those axes, uh, let's do negative uh, 100 then. Uh, no, negative 168, yeah, let's try 100. And let's do positive 100. Yeah, let's show more of those. I'm trying to flatten that out a bit. Okay, well, that's a little bit better. Uh, because you want to find the intercepts. And so if you remember how to do that, second function, calculate menu, 
number two, right? For and now you have to you have to move the cursor to the left and right of of these uh, uh, intercepts. So let's see, where is my cursor? Oh, there it is. So you need to kind of go just to the left uh, so that it shows to the left and obviously above the intercept. You hit enter, and then you move the cursor over to the right so it's just below the intercept. And then it gives you the, your little indicators of where the, 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 the boundaries are for the calculator to search. So it's going to search for this intercept. You hit enter one more time. There you go, I get a 14. And you do the same thing for the other side and you should get positive 12. And that's how you do it with uh, uh, your TI-83 calculator if you're using one of those, okay? Any final questions on that? Yeah, no? <laughs> okay. Understand? Or is that helping? A little bit better maybe? All right.